Hi everybody, this is Mars Peach doing my first movie review. Um, I recently saw X-Men First Class. Uh, actually, it was, okay, it was a week ago. I saw it uh, in advanced screening of it, so I got to go for free. Otherwise, to tell you the truth, I had no interest in seeing it whatsoever. I, I'm i not a comic book fan. I don't, I never have been interested in reading comic books because the long histories and the different storylines and all, all the different characters really confuse me. But I don't know if it's just because I had two younger brothers growing up who were really into it, but I loved the X-Men, the 90s cartoon as a kid, and I would watch it all the time with them admittedly but I still watched it, that and a bunch of other superhero stuff. I've seen a few episodes of Wolverine and the X-Men which I think came out a few years ago. I don't know exactly when. I didn't I didn't really like that, but um just so being a big X-Men fan at least of the cartoon, why would I not want to see this movie? Well, mainly because I hated the other X-Men movies. And okay, I'm not qualified to give judgment because the only one that I saw in full was the first one and it was just bleh, forgettable. It was cool just in a nostalgic point of view to see the characters that, you know, I know and love as, you know, real people. But I feel like the movie was, it was kind of boring. I I liked Wolverine. I, had, I guess I like Professor X well enough, but they didn't have, they had the boring ones, like Storm, Halle Berry was awful, like, do you know what happens to a toad when it's struck by lightning? That whole scene was terrible. Jean Grey, who's just blah, I thought the actress was good as her, but I didn't like her. Then, no, who likes Cyclops? He's so dull as Dishwater as a character, but they're the main X-Men, and they made him even more boring the boring ones is more boring than they are in the, like, their old versions. I'm guessing in the comics, too, because the cartoon followed the comics, but... So, and, and Rogue, as, like, this young teenager, the newbie, that was just bizarre. Why would they choose Rogue in that role? I really, I don't know. But it was a decent, not memorable movie at all. I heard the second one was actually not bad, but I had no desire to see it. I've seen parts of the third one, which I've just heard terrible reviews all around. So I really didn't want to see that. And then I saw maybe the last 15 minutes of Wolverine, or X-Men Origins Wolverine. Oh my god, it was just... I was looking, I actually wanted to see that one because I liked Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. And just catching, like, the ending like that, I'm like, oh my god. Was the beginning part good that I missed? It wasn't, apparently, what everyone says. So, I guess there's nothing bad about me missing that. But, um, yeah, my friend got an extra pass for me to go to this advanced screening and it was free. It was on um, my way home from where I was working. So I'm like, why not? It's free. Uh, there was a new theater you went to, which was also really nice. Lots of space like to get through in between the aisles, which was really cool. But let me just say, long story short, I was so pleasantly surprised by this movie. It was... A brilliantly paced, really good acting. Um, back to the pacing. It was it was pretty long, I think, but it didn't feel like it. I could have stayed and watched more of the story because I was really getting into it. I could have watched like a whole mini series at that point just in the theater, um, which I felt almost would have been better because the ending I had a few issues with. But I don't want to spoil it too much right away. Maybe later. Um, this video I'm doing as a response to Proto Man's because I like to watch his videos. Um, anyway, his main complaint, well, one of them was the choice of X Men. And I, I have to, well, no, the mutants. I have to agree with that because 
I'm sure there were some of them were good, like Sebastian Shaw. Uh, I don't really, I didn't really like January Jones that much, but I guess that fit the character. That was interesting. X Men, not X Men, Magneto and uh, Professor X and Mystique were really good, and Beast. The other people, it was, it was like I don't know the. Um, character Angel, I thought it was going to be, like, what's his name, Warren Worthington, the real, the actual angel who became Archangel, and instead it was this, like, black girl, and, uh, I felt like her character wasn't really true to the time period, but a lot of it really wasn't, so I don't want to complain too much about that. Uh, Banshee was kind of stupid. Havoc was okay, but it was weird how this was... I know they messed with... They um, put their spin on a lot of stuff, but Havoc all of a sudden being from 1962 and we had Cyclops in the later movies who was in present day. Or maybe they're changing it because his name is still Alex Summers. Maybe he's Cyclops' dad in this version? I don't know. But and Wolverine made a cameo, which was pretty cool. But... Some of the stuff, uh, what I feel like they really screwed themselves over tying into the Choice of Mutants was in making this a direct prequel to their other trilogy. Because their other trilogy plus Wolverine really wasn't good. So, them trying to keep to the continuity and tie everything back into that, I think is what really messed them up. Because they had a more limited um, selection of characters to choose from that they didn't already use there. I mean, some of the older ones, obviously, they could use younger versions of them, but not everyone, obviously, because that one makes sense, and um, trying to keep to the storyline, like, they kept Magneto's background in the concentration camp, which they recreated the scene in the beginning where he was screaming, and then he made, like, the fence move when, when he discovered his powers. Um, I think they... At first, I thought they reused the same footage, but apparently they redid it with a different actor. I haven't seen that movie in years, so it seemed like exactly the same thing to me. But them, yeah, tying, trying to keep to the same continuity screwed them over because on the one hand, they, they were limited in what they could do. On the other, they didn't, they created more problems for themselves because there were certain issues that they didn't follow. Because um, in the third one, I guess there's a scene where... Uh, Magneto and Professor X go to get Jean Grey, and they're still friends at that point, but they're older. In this one, they have their... They split up at the end when they're still young. Uh, okay, maybe they got back together for a point. I know it sounds like they're dating, but it's like a, it's a bromance movie anyway, so in a way you can say that. That was weird. Uh, or they they, they kind of tossed that out the window, but they tried to conform to other stuff. Like Beast, apparently, in the second one, was still had didn't have his blue fur. In this one, he gains his blue fur in it. That was weird. Um, there was no mention of them. Like they they try to recruit Wolverine. It's a cameo scene. It's only for comedy because he tells them to go f themselves. I'm um, to try to keep this. PG rating, but he said the F word. Um, and there's no mention in the first one, like, yeah, you know, Logan, I tried to recruit you uh, back, if, like, 40 years ago, and you wouldn't, like, he's, he didn't say, like, oh, I remember, no one recalled this, obviously. Just stuff like that. I feel like it would, they, it would have been better if they had more freedom and just did a total reboot. They could have started in the 60s still. And then, you know, later they could have redone the, you know, present day stuff because it wasn't really that great. And they're rebooting other stuff, like they're rebooting Spider-Man now. Apparently they're doing a Fantastic Four reboot because those are no good. I didn't, I didn't see the Fantastic Four ones. But <sighs> that's what I feel was their main problem. And then also at the end, it was like everything was so well paced and such a good setup this is where the spoilers come in i feel like all of a sudden they're like oh no we're nearing the end of the movie we don't know if we're gonna get a sequel so we better cram in all the plot points we have to at the end right now like they had um magneto or what's his name eric and xavier split up 
Xavier or Professor Xavier Charles, whatever, gets paralyzed. Um, the basically that that whole thing, or, or yeah, Beast also turned blue in this, and Mystique goes over to join Magneto, even though they only had there was like one scene. She was like Charles's adopted sister in this. They you know grew up together, but just because Magneto like in one scene, basically. I don't know how, if, um, uh, they slept together, but they, um, they made out at least, because she embraced her blueness. Just because of that, she's gonna turn and go over to his side? I, it, I don't know, it was like, they didn't know for sure if they were gonna have sequels, and they're like, we need to fit in everything now. And that is what I think messed it up. I think if they had, on the one hand, planned a whole storyline for this, done it as just a reboot, started everything fresh, it could have been a 10 out of 10 perfect movie. As it is, though, it does. it's still a really well-paced movie, really well-acted, much better and more interesting than the other ones, at least uh, the first one and the parts of the second and third and Wolverine that I saw. So as it is, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10.